Papers. Happy Saturday. I hope you guys are doing good today. So it is a lot going on. We have been in the finance room talking for the past 24 hours, honey. If you guys are not aware, child, something is amiss, okay? So Silicon Valley Bank has literally collapsed. They had to get taken over by the feds. Um, this entire situation is insane. It's a lot of things that kind of cause this to come to a head. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey, T6. And it's been brewing for a while now. If you guys are staying on top of, you know, just finances, the banking industry, you guys have been seeing a lot of things are coming ahead. While things were looking good during the pandemic and all this free money was flowing freely, a lot of that stuff has stopped. A lot of that stuff has slowed down. We've had all the issues with the cryptocurrencies, the scams, Sam Bakeman freed and FTX. And now we're having a similar situation, not really scammy, but, you know, a collapse nonetheless with Silicon Valley Bank. And the crazy thing is, like I've always told you guys, when you deposit money into a bank, yeah, they're going to show you what's in your account, quote unquote, on paper, right? So on paper or on your computer, it shows that you have, you know, $5,000 in the bank. But physically, that money is not there, okay? It's just showing you that as a sense of comfort, like, ooh, I have $5,000 in the bank. But that money is not sitting there. That money is being used. That money is being borrowed against. Um, you know, many banks like Wells Fargo will take your money. And let's say, you know, Joe Schmo needs a car loan. They'll have your money that's sitting in the bank and your neighbor's money that's sitting in the bank. And they'll give it to Joe Schmo to go get a car loan at a certain percentage point. Right. So that's how they make their money back. They're basically using our money to loan it out to other people. And then they make money off of that as well. I call it double dipping, but anyways. So what's going on with Silicon Valley Bank is that not only were they loaning out money like most banks do, they were also buying a lot of, you know, U.S. treasuries and bonds and things like that. But if you guys are watching, the interest rates are going up. And so if you bought, you know, treasuries and bonds and stocks at a fixed interest rate a year ago at, let's say, at 3%, and now things are jumping up as high as 7%. They're trying to pull their money out because at this point they're losing. It's not benefiting them to keep that money in there as the rates are steadily going up. So what's very interesting is that I guess a little birdie told the CEO and the CFO that something was amiss because they pulled their money out the bank. They, stole, they sold their stocks and pulled their money out the bank two weeks ago. So they got a two week head start. Now, as we know, a lot of venture capitalists like, you know, the money's drying up. A lot of startups are they're just not starting up. OK, and so in so little words, they're not starting up. The tech industry is not as strong as it once was. We see, you know, the downturn with Facebook and Meta. We see them having to merge and connect with all these other apps and stuff like that. So the tech company is really struggling. So they can't even depend on a lot of that tech money that they were depending on to get deposited into the bank. So what ended up happening is that on Wednesday, SVP announced that it had sold a bunch of its securities at a loss. I don't know who told them to announce that because what was interesting is that a week or two before this, our good friend who I haven't watched since the 2008 crash, Jim Cramer was on the news pushing that stock. Not even a week ago, he was encouraging people. He was encouraging people to put money into stock with Silicon Valley Bank. Ninth best performer year to date is SVB Financial. Don't you want this company's a merchant bank with a deposit base that Wall Street had been stakely concerned about. SVB is the old Silicon Valley Bank. Recently bought one of our favorite research firms, Buffett Nathanson, and it's become less dependent upon private equity and venture capitalist offerings. Wait a second. Those dried up last year, they could come back. Yes, some of them come back here with the stock directly affects an oversold position. Stock was the fourth worst performer in 2022. I think the fears were not justified, and it's a very compelling situation. Hey, by the way, long-term private equity and venture capital, they're not going away. Being the banker to these invest, immense pools of capital has always been a very good business. Stock and so it's very interesting that he said that. And, you know, for whatever reason, people still follow this man. I don't know why. But this man has literally been around since I was a teenager. He's an idiot. This is the same man who, during the 2008 crash, was promoting Bears and Stearns. People...
literally called in like, I'm hearing rumors that this bank may not be a good bank, that they might be crashing. Oh, no, everything's fine. Keep your money in the bank. Child of one, two days later, that bitch crashed, okay? Okay, Peter writes, should I be worried about Bear Stearns in terms of liquidity and get my money out of there? No, no, no. Bear Stearns is fine. Do not take your money out. This is real. Look, if there's one takeaway other than a plus 400 or something, Bear Stearns is not in trouble. I mean, if anything, they're more likely to be taken over. Don't move your money from Bear. That's just being silly. Don't be silly. Okay, just so you get a sense of what's causing the agony by this point, I know you've been talking about it. It's financials led by Bear Stearns after what essentially is a bailout from the Fed. Bear Stearns shares are down 90% this morning, and it's not just Bear. Pretty much every single bank is plunging in early trade this morning. Lehman, which is very similar to Bear and its reliance on fixed income, is down nearly 30%. Why are y'all still listening to Jim Cramer? There's so many other better financial people that y'all can listen to on the internet. I don't have a financial background, so I'm not even saying listen to me. But please find somebody besides Jim Cramer. He was saying that. Then all of a sudden this past Wednesday, SVP comes out and they tell everybody like, you know, hey, we took, you know, a loss. We're pulling out a bunch of securities. We took a loss. And so that triggered a lot of panic with the venture capitalists. So a lot of the firms that had money invested in them, they started withdrawing their money like crazy. So it was this huge bank run that went down between Wednesday and Thursday. Now, it's a lot easier for the venture capitalists who have direct connects with the bank to pull their money out. So they got their money out. So then by the time the regular Joe Schmo woke up on Thursday morning, they're seeing their bank on the news and they're having financial problems and everything else. Everybody's having, you know, basically PTSD of 2007, 2008. Folks go to the bank to go get their money out. They're met with police. NYPD's out there. LAPD's out there. They're told, hey, ain't nobody. We'll see what we can do. Give us a week. But people got bills to pay. People got kids to feed. People got gas that they need to put in their car. And their money literally is right now in limbo. And then they have a sign posted with their address for the Palo Alto branch on Sand Hill Road. And they're telling folks to go over there. And we have colleagues out there as well looking to talk to customers. And people right now are just wondering what will happen to their funds. I've been speaking with investors all day, venture capitalists all day, who are working with their portfolio companies to figure out what this might mean for them. There are concerns I've heard around making payroll for some startups in this industry because they may have had cash sitting with SVB that they used for payroll, and that could very well be over 250K. So I think... I think right now there's a lot of shock in the tech industry. I have been texting and speaking on the phone with investors all morning as I was all day yesterday. And this morning I messaged someone and said, what happens now? I messaged a venture capitalist who has a long history in the industry. And he responded and said, pandemonium. And I don't, I don't want to make it sound alarmist, but there are a lot of people wondering what happens now. This year was already looking very tough for startups in a tougher funding environment. Startups constantly need to raise money to keep going. And I've posed this question to everyone I've talked to today. You know, this seems like it's a very ominous sign in a year that people already thought was going to be tough. And, and nobody has disputed that, it seems like. Now, a lot of people are saying, well, you shouldn't really worry because the FDIC, the FDIC protects people. I've been telling y'all this for years. The FDIC only covers $250,000, right? The average American, do they have $250,000 in their account? Probably not. But that is the max that they're willing to cover. If you have more than that, you never put all your money in one bank because anything outside of 250 grand, they are not legally, they don't have to cover it, right? But what people don't understand is that let's say everybody in America decided today on March 11th, we're all going to go to the bank at two o'clock and pull our money out just because we don't fuck with the banks no more. We're going to Wells, we're going to Bank of America, we're going to all the credit unions. We want our money. 
If we were to all pull our money at the bank, out of the bank at the same time, the entire banking system would collapse. There would not be enough money to insure everyone in America that has a bank account of this $250,000. So that is a farce, and that's been a farce from day one. Now, what's really troubling with this, this is not like your average quote-unquote bank. This is a bank that was mainly, you know, started up for Silicon Valley people, tech startups, and things like that. So... Yes, you do have regular people who bank there, who work with these startups. So they're like, well, let me get me a personal bank. You know, let me get me a personal bank account with this bank because, you know, I'm with this tech company. So you have them who are suffering. But there are many corporations who have money tied into SVB, like Roku. Roku currently has $487 million or 26% of its cash and cash equivalents tied into SVP. So this is really serious. This is enough to wipe out some companies if this is not rectified. The FDIC is only going to cover 250000 If they're unable to get their money back, it's a wrap for Roku and many other companies. So this is a really, really big deal. I don't know how they're going to pay these people back because most of the people who bank at this bank are venture capitalists and people who have big money at this bank. It's not just your average Joe. So even if they're, even if certain people there at the bank are able to get back up to 250000 what if you're running your own startup? What if you're running your own company and you have payroll and everything else and you have millions tied in to this bank? Because, again, we're told we can't have millions of dollars in cash underneath the mattress. We have to put it in the bank. So if you're running a legitimate business and you have it at this bank, and now they're saying, well, the only thing we can cover is 250 if you're lucky. Well, what about the remaining millions of dollars that's tied in to Silicon Valley Bank? So I believe the only way they're going to be able to rectify this, they're going to have to get some type of government bailout. But right now, as we all know, the government is struggling, honey. Okay, okay. They are struggling. I just found out yesterday on Discord, they done cut half the wick. Y'all's not getting as much milk on wick. They have uh, cut the EBT. People are not getting as much money on EBT. They're trying to get rid of the cash assistance for welfare. Um, there's all, Medicaid is not even paying people's bills at this point. Even a lot of clinics are not taking Medicaid because they're saying that when they're submitting the paperwork to be paid after they've rendered services, the state is saying, well, we don't have it. So now even clinics are turning people away who have Medicaid. So it is getting bad out here. Um, it's a lot going on. If they get a bailout, this is going to be insane. And this is making me think, like, if they're struggling in their big tech bank and they at one point was getting billions of dollars from the tech industry, what is going on with all the other regular local banks that just, you know, the regular folk outside of the tech industry store their money in? Again, like I've told y'all on Discord, please make sure you guys have your money in multiple banks. Do not keep all your eggs in one basket. Please stop fooling with Wells Fargo, child. Um, you know, y'all drug me when y'all found out I still had a damn Wells Fargo account. Um, but at this point, also make sure you have a little bit of cash on hand. Because you don't want to be into a situation where all of a sudden... You know, banks have been sending people text messages. Oh, you know, we're having glitches. Oh, you know, you can't access your account right now. I told y'all the other day I went to go check my PNC account. No info. Oh, technical glitch. You can't access right now. So it's getting very frightening out here. So just make sure that you go to your bank and you get some cash on hand a few thousand dollars just in case for food, gas, and necessities until you can get over a potential hump. But there's going to be great fallout from this, and I wonder if any other banks will be soon to follow. This financial situation in the U.S. is getting worse. Let's go ahead and talk about it. Go ahead and leave a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts. How do you guys feel about this entire situation? Don't forget to like the video. Make sure you share the video. And also make sure you still subscribe to the channel. I'll talk to you later. Have a good day. Deuces.